Welcome back. Previously, we talked about why anyone would want to make a printed circuit board in the first place. If you're new to designing PCBs, KiCad is a great starting point because it's free and open source. On this episode, we'll start our 555 badge project and create a custom schematic part, also known as a symbol. If you haven't already, head to keycad-pcb.org and download the KiCad software. Follow whatever installation instructions are necessary for your operating system. Once you've installed it, open KiCad and you'll be presented with the Project Manager window. This is where we can create new KiCad projects, organize files in those projects, and launch the various programs that make up the KiCad suite, like EE Schema and PCB New. To start our project, go to File, New Project, New Project. I like to create a new folder somewhere to keep my KiCad projects together. So, I'll create a new KiCad directory in the Documents folder. Here, I'll create another folder and name it 555 underscore badge. Navigate into that folder and give your project a name, such as 555 underscore badge. A dot pro suffix will be added to the end of the file name. This file is where KiCad keeps information about your project. Click Save. You should see the files in your project on the left, which, at this point, should just be a blank schematic file and a blank PCB file. When you're actually creating a board, you'll probably jump back and forth between several programs. For example, you might jump right into schematic capture, realize halfway through that that you're missing a part, so you open the library editor, make your symbol, and then go back to creating your schematic. Showing this slightly chaotic process in a video series is difficult, so we're going to assume that you've already realized that you need to make the 555 timer symbol and start with the library editor. Back in the KiCad project manager, select Tools, Run Library Editor. The library editor program will open with a blank page. We'll want to create a new component, so click the Create a New Component button, which, oddly enough, does not have a menu bar equivalent under File or Edit. Let's give it the name 7555 and leave the reference designator as U. Originally, 555 timers were integrated circuits made with bipolar transistors intended for things like oscillators and pulse generators. They were created in the 1970s and have a sort of cult following among electrical engineers. Since then, various derivatives have been made, including the 7555 timer, which we'll be using. This works the same as a 555 timer, but uses CMOS instead of bipolar transistors. CMOS can operate at lower voltages, which is how we're able to power our badge project with a single 3-volt coin cell battery. But do keep in mind that CMOS is a little more sensitive to electrostatic discharge, so just be careful when you're handling the component. A reference designator, or REFDES for short, is a combination of letters and numbers used to identify electrical components on a board. If you scroll down the Wikipedia page for reference designator, you'll find a list of commonly used REFDES letters. You'll see that U is used for integrated circuits, like our 7555, so we'll use that. Click OK to create our new part. Before we start editing anything, let's create a library to house our custom parts. Click the Save Current Component to New Library button, which looks like a book with blank pages. Navigate to your project directory, which should be named something like 555 badge. When creating components unique to a project like this, I like to give the library the same name as the project. So, we'll call this one 555 underscore badge dot lib. Save it, and you'll get a pop-up explaining that the library isn't available until we load it in EE Schema, which we'll do later. Note that if you wanted to store your parts in a larger library that's accessible by all your projects, you could do that too. But for the sake of learning KiCad, let's keep our parts in a project-specific library for now. The advantage of having a project-specific library is that it becomes easier to share your custom parts if you were to upload your project to, say, something like GitHub. Even though we saved our component into a new library, we need to set that library as our working library. That will allow us to make edits to our part and save it back into the library. It's a little confusing, but it's a necessary step. Select Preferences, Component Libraries. Under Component Library Files, click Add. Navigate to your project directory, which for me is in Documents, KiCad, 555 underscore badge. Select the 555 underscore badge dot lib file and click Open. If you scroll down, you'll see that the 555 badge library has been added. Click OK. Now that KiCad knows where to find our custom library, 
we need to set it as our working library. Click File, Current Library. Select the 555 badge library and click OK. At the top of the window, you should see our library file listed. This means that we have it selected as the working library, and we can now save any changes we make to our part to that library. Zoom in on the text in the center of the page, which you can do with the hot buttons, but I'll use my mouse wheel to make things easier. Right-click on the text. Because there are two fields here, you'll be asked to select which one you want to edit. Click Field Value 7555, which is the name of our component, and click Move. Move the text down a ways and click again to place it. Note that you can hover your mouse over an object, like our ref does, and press the M key to move it, which I'll be doing often in order to speed things up. Let's move the U designator up and out of the way for now. Click the Add Pins button and click somewhere on the page to create a pin. This is where it can be handy to look at the datasheet for our part. At the bottom of the first page, we see the 8-pin dip package with pin names and numbers. Pin names give a description of what that pin does, and pin numbers are used to designate where the pin is on the physical part. Notice that on our dip package, the numbering starts with 1 to the left of the notch and counts up going down. Pin 5 is across from pin 4, and the numbering continues going up on the opposite side. We see that pin 1 is ground. Pin 2 is trigger, and notice the horizontal bar over the pin name. This means that the pin is active low, and it can be useful to keep that bar on the pin name when looking at schematics, so we'll replicate it on our part. You can choose to make the schematic symbol look like the part here, but it doesn't ultimately matter. The important thing is that the pin names and numbers match up. Putting the datasheet and library editor side by side can be very helpful here. Back in our library editor, name the pin GND and assign it the number 1. Don't worry about orientation, we'll fix that in a minute. The electrical type is really only useful if we're doing an electrical rules check once we've made the schematic. Most of the time I find setting up this check to be more trouble than it's worth, so we can just ignore the type for now. Click OK. Click again anywhere in the sheet to place the pin. Because we're still in the Add Pin mode, we can just click on an empty area in the sheet to create another pin. Name this tilde trig in all capital letters. Note that the tilde gives it the horizontal bar over the name. Give it the number 2, click OK, and click again to drop the pin. Repeat this process for the other six pins, where out is pin 3, tilde rst is pin 4, cv is pin 5, thresh is pin 6, dis is pin 7, and VDD is pin 8. Our pulsing LED circuit is based on a simple 555 timer flashing circuit like this one from 555timercircuits.com. Notice that the pins on the 555 symbol aren't ordered by number. Instead, they're configured in a way that makes reading the schematic easier, with power and ground pins on the top and bottom, the output on the right, and everything else on the left. We want to organize the pins to line up with the pins on the example circuit's symbol. Right-click on pin 1 and select Rotate Pin to spin it. Do this once to have the pin face down, just like in the example circuit. Right-click on it again and select Move Pin. Place this pin down and over from the middle line by one grid dot. Hover over pin 5 with your mouse and press the M key to move it. While the pin is on your cursor, you can press the R key to rotate it. Move and rotate the pin so that it is next to the ground pin, but to the right of the middle line by one grid dot. I like to keep pins at least two grid spaces away from each other to allow the text to be easily read. Continue moving the pins around until they are organized the same way as in our example circuit. If you need help remembering the hotkeys, press the question mark key and that'll bring up a list for you. While this is a perfectly usable schematic symbol, we should probably draw a box around it to make it look nice. Click the Draw Rectangle tool and draw a box around the pin names, but just touching the inside of the pins. Notice that the origin of our grid is shown by the two intersecting blue lines. When we go to place the part in the schematic capture program, the part will be attached to our cursor at this origin point, and it will also rotate around this origin point. Right now, the origin is in the center of our part, which is a good spot. If yours is not, you can click the Anchor tool and click in the middle of the part to move the origin. 
we can tighten up our symbol by moving the ref des to the top left of the symbols box and the part name to the bottom right. There's no real standard as to where these pieces of text should be, but I like to try to keep custom parts with the ref des on top and name on the bottom. And that's it! We just made our first schematic symbol. Click File, Save Current Library. You'll be asked if you want to include the latest component changes, click Yes, and click Yes again to modify the library file. Go ahead and close out of the library editor. Now that you've seen how to create your own schematic symbol, we're ready to make the full schematic. The good news is that we don't have to create a custom part for everything. There are libraries maintained by KeyCab, DigiKey, and others that make our lives a lot easier. But knowing how to make your own part is very useful for when you need something that's not in one of those libraries. On the next episode, we'll see how to connect our 7555 timer to other parts that are found in those libraries. See you then.